each bomb fell at a different rate due to the wind resistance and its aerodynamic shape. So they would go out to all the different types of bombs and find out how long it took the bomb to strike the surface, the time of fall. You take the time of fall times the ground speed, you can find out how far the airplane flips. Time times speed equals distance. So if you take the time of fall times the ground speed of the airplane, that's the distance the airplane is going to travel while the bomb is falling to the earth. And that distance is called the home range. The home range. Hope right, W-H-O-L-E. Do I talk really loud? Can you hear me? Yeah. So the time, the ground speed times the time of fall gave the whole range. The second piece of experimental data that the bombardier would know was what was called the trail. Because of forward and upward air resistance, the bomb always landed behind the airplane at the point of impact. And that distance was called the trail. So they would go up and drop thousands of bombs and find out how far behind the airplane each bomb type could strike. And he would get those two pieces of experimental information from these bombing tables. Based on his airspeed and altitude, he could look up and find out what his type of fall was and what the trail was. So although the airplane would have traveled the whole range during the time of fall, the bomb would strike back here. So you take the whole range, you subtract the trail, and now you have the actual range. So whole range minus trail gives the actual range. That forms the vertical side of the, excuse me, the horizontal side of the triangle. The vertical side of the triangle is the altitude. Now you have the actual range here, the whole range here. The hypotenuse is the dropping angle. And the bomb site was able to determine the ground speed to calculate the whole range and actual range by synchronizing on the target. There's a mirror inside the bomb site, and the telescope focuses on the mirror. The mirror runs based on a motor. When the bomb the deer synchronizes that motor exactly right to keep the crosshairs situated on the target, that gives the bomb site the ground speed information. And then with its 2,000 parts inside, it can use the drop angle. As you get closer and closer to the target, the sighting angle gets more and more vertical. And when the sighting angle gets more and more vertical, it comes up and meets the drop angle. And there's two indicators in there. One's the dropping angle indicator, the other's the sighting angle indicator. And those two indicators meet electrical connection is made, and the bombs are released. That is the first of three things that the bombardier has to determine, the dropping angle. The second thing the bombardier has to do is to figure out how to deal with a crosswind. If you're flying towards the target, the crosswind will blow you off the path. And you can turn back towards the path, but if you keep continuing on that path, you're going to keep getting blown off over and over and over again. So you have to fly the airplane into the wind to fly a straight path towards the target. And that's called a crab angle or a drift angle. So the airplane is turned into the wind fly a straight path to the target. That's called killing the drift. But you have to do more than that. You have to position the airplane upwind from, from the target because the bomb is going to be carried downwind. So not only are you flying with a drift angle here, you have to position the airplane upwind. The drift angle is determined by the turn and drift knob. You can imagine that if you are turned to the wind, flying towards the target, the bomb site facing it this way, the airplane has to be turned more than the bomb site. So that those two knobs together will turn the airplane through the autopilot system five times more than the bomb site to get you on the correct angle. To get upwind from the target, you have to move a distance called the cross trails. That's the distance upwind that you have to move 
up here. So that when you release the bomb, it gets blown downwind. The bonsai is able to compute the cross trail, which is this distance here, because the cross trail is equal to the trail, which we talked about before, times the sine of the drift angle. So you set your trail in, you've got your drift angle set in, and the trail times the sine of the drift angle calculates the cross trail, puts the, it tilts the telescope to one side, it actually tilts the telescope, and that causes the bottom there to put the airplane up with. So those are the three things that had to be determined, the drift angle, the cross trail, and the dropping angle. As I mentioned, the bomb release was automatic. The sighting angle gets more and more vertical. Eventually, the drop angle, those two indicators touch. The bomb is released through the Norton bomb site on the bombing run. You can control the airplane's autopilot. There's a little knob here. When you throw this knob, it takes the gyroscope inside here, and it's going to stabilize the sight head, which is then going to tell the autopilot what to do. So on the bombing run, Dr. Raver was actually driving the airplane left and right to the target. You about ready to drop some bombs? Sure. We're going to fire this thing up.